much. What's up, Diana? Hey, Diana. Can you hear us okay? Can you guys hear me? Yes. Perfect. Can you hear us? Oh. Awesome. So I know you're pressed for time, but first of all, just thank you very much. I apologize for my persistent co-host over here. You're, you're, you guys are nuts. You 24-7. You're nuts. You guys should be, you should work for ESPN because you get shit done. Well, that's a good segue uh, into our first question. Perfect. Um, are you guys hiring? And <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but no, so I, I know, um, you know, we, uh, Mike Giardi, I don't know, gave us a referral or whatever you want to call it. But, but no, thank you for your time. I know you're super busy. Um, it won't be any more than 25 minutes or so if that works for you. That's awesome, guys. Thank okay. you so much. Cool. Thanks for even thinking of me. Oh, yeah, of course. absolutely. If I can see um, you on TV every day, so yeah. <laughs> hard not to. Yeah. From this shitty apartment that I live in. It's probably nicer than Soapy and I's houses. Yeah, it's it's better <laughs> than ours. So I'm Soapy. Uh, we yep. were the one to, going back and forth, and that's yep, Dan. And I'm Dan. Um, but anyway, so here we are. So we're lucky to have Diana Rossini, ESPN, all things football on our show, episode 67. Does that sound right? Yeah, 67, okay. the impossible dream season. Yeah. Um, here we go. My first question for you, Diana, I like to ask a lot of people, this is when did you, not when did you, you know, decide you wanted to do this? When did you know you were going to work in sports media and maybe even, was it always, was football always the first choice? Was it always the passion? No. And no, in this being okay. my dream at all. Um, oh. I knew I wanted to be a news reporter, Yeah, but I didn't want to be like a national reporter. I just wanted to be a local news reporter and work at channel seven eyewitness news in New York city. That's all I wanted to do. Okay, cool. Um, and I got really lucky and got into New York city pretty early on in my life Mm -hmm. as a news reporter. Uh, I actually worked at the rival station at WNBC. And while I was there, I was covering a lot of crime fires, just all the, you know, your typical stuff that leads the six and 11 o'clock news. Mm -hmm. and in between the shifts uh sometimes you'd have to go back to the studio to switch crews or meet up with the news team to talk about things I would always run over to the sports department to catch a game or you know just talk to them about the Yankees or the Jets or the Giants whatever it was Mm -hmm. and then finally after about like two months of doing it I found myself dreading going out to go do the story for the 11 that sports anchor is like, dude, why don't you just like do sports? Like you love it. You know, you're a female. There's not a lot of women who do this. And I was like, I don't know. I'm just, I've been a jock my whole life that I felt like it was very like obvious, like the former high school football quarterback that goes back and he's the coach. You know what I mean? Like, I'm like, I (laughs) need to be more, I got to do more in my life. And eventually I realized you can't fake what you love. Mm -hmm. You have to just embrace it, even if it's not what you thought it would be. So I started to follow that. And I'll be honest with you. I didn't know a lot about football. We're a baseball family. Yep. And my brother, my dad, my grandfather. So I'm from the Bronx originally. So we grew up at Yankee stadium. It was just, just baseball is what we did. Yeah. Um, so I jumped around to a lot of different cities and eventually I was forced to learn football because you can't work at a local sports station and not know football, obviously. Mm -hmm. Um, So, so I I learned and failed miserably and eventually just, just kept going, kept working at it. And eventually I got to ESPN. Nice. Nice. Um, No, great. So that's actually not for nothing. That's somewhat common from what we've heard from other people where it's like well i mean you can say that for anyone hey i wanted to do this and now i end up doing this um but it, it's interesting coming from do you, do you feel like any of your experience with more general news and covering like you said like crime and murder and fires and stuff like that has helped you with with sports as well it is 100 percent the reason why i've had success yeah because it's storytelling it's asking the right questions it's piecing together puzzles it's being fearless. Yeah. Um, sometimes it's a flaw of mine, but I think what's helped is I, I don't really care. I'll just ask a player, a coach, a GM, anything. I'll just, yeah. because to me, here's another thing. Mm-hmm. So when you cover real news, so I covered uh, the shooting at Sandy Hook Elementary as one of the first reporters on the scene that morning. Mm-hmm. When you cover real things that involve people's lives, babies, I mean, mm-hmm. little kids' lives, yeah, it's it's hard to get scared off by Bill Belichick in a press conference, 
uh, mm -hmm. when we have to ask him about at the time, you know, Tom Brady's thumb injury. Mm -hmm. I remember that was like one of my quote tough moments. My big <laughs> break of asking Belichick a question was like, yeah. I think it was, did you do you regret trading away Jimmy Garoppolo now that Tom's hurt? Mm -hmm. and, and Mike Giardi is one of them. He's like, dude, I can't believe you asked that. <laughs> Shut Who up, care? You yeah, don't right? talk to him like that. <laughs> He'll kill you. I was like, I don't care. Like, yeah. we, and, and look, you don't want to like burn people. And I, I don't want to like call, I didn't want to build enemies. Yeah. But like, what's Bill going to do anyway? Yell at me? All right. So he yells at me. Yeah, that's fair. So that's actually a, a good segue. So you, you know, Bill's a great example. But what about players? And obviously, I've noticed it's, well, obviously obvious is a little different this year. I know you're doing more your sideline interviews with those weird, like 10 foot <laughs> microphones and all that stuff, which actually it's better than nothing. I'm sure. But in, in your experience, what are some of the, some of your favorite people to interview and any, any specific players or coaches who have given you a, a tough time that are no. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I've had more run-ins of difficulty than I've had actual okay. success. Then let's do that. That that's probably more fun anyway. Yeah, no, it is. Well, I let me preface this with, and I, okay. I say it's not just to you guys because because you're in the Boston area. Mm -hmm. My top three favorite teams, um, I would say the Saints are number one. They're just a fun locker room. Mm -hmm. They're tough. I actually love covering New England. Mm -hmm. The players are great. They've always been just really cool guys. All right, they're not going to give you inside info. They're not going to give you sp uh, like you know scoop. They're going to give you coach speak. But I like them as people, if that makes any sense. Like, I just, I enjoy them. And, mm -hmm. I, and I, this is when I could be around them. I, I can't right. really just right. talk and text with them. Um, but I, so I used to think going into New England would be my, my toughest challenge. And then I just realized, all right, if you give into the fact that you're probably not going to get a lot of info and just appreciate football and, and sort of get to know these guys, you can, you can actually get some good reports. Mm -hmm. Um, I'd say my toughest, my toughest interaction was Mike Vrabel mm. because I could see that <laughs> was a, he just was very um, against media. I could I could feel it like soon as what, he when he was up, with New England or with Tennessee, Tennessee. Oh, okay, hmm. when yeah, he first I I up, yeah, yeah, I him in Indy to introduce <laughs> myself. Mm. And he didn't really want to get to know me at all. He didn't wow. even, yeah. So he was tough. Um, now, on the other hand, Mike Tomlin, wonderful. Yeah. Just now tough, mm -hmm. but kind. Like there's, I there's can see that. He seems yeah. like a respectable guy, at least. Yeah. Or like a well spoken guy, whatever, whatever you want to put it. But yeah. I, hmm. I'd say player, though, like probably the two players, I, I just love talking to them. Uh, I got three. Okay. I'd say, Alvin Kamara, number one, mm -hmm. because he, he's entertaining. He, he gets like the camera comes on and mm -hmm. he like, he plays it up and it's fun. Great. Mark Ingram, yes. The girls. Oh, they, they love to dance in that same, locker though. room too. Sean Payton included. <laughs> love it. They love it. And they they love to like talk about it. Yeah. <laughs> um, and a former St. Mark Ingram, mm -hmm. always electric on camera. Love talking to him. And they're, they're, when I say this to because you, I used to be around them so much, you appreciate people who are like, how are you? Yeah. Like, like you're not used to that when you cover teams, right? Cause they don't, mm -hmm. they're busy. They don't give a crap about you. Mm -hmm. But when you're around them a lot, they start to like actually ask like, Oh, I heard you got married, you know, wh whatever it was. Um, and then I'd say um, Derek Henry now has become my favorite player to cover. Mm -hmm. I just like watching him play, but sure. then he's, he's really quiet. But if you can get him after a game where he played well, like last week I got him after Indy, he was awesome post game. Mm. Just awesome. Just such good TV. So those are some of my favorite players to interview. I'd say my top, oh, you know what? My toughest introduction to somebody was Bill Parcells. Mm, yeah. Could see that. <laughs> I called him and he hung up on me. <laughs> nice. We assumed that's how this interview was going to go personally. Yeah. Um, well, he's going to hang up on us, it, but yeah. Yeah. Six months. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's it's crazy that you then ended up immediately offering us both jobs at ESPN. Very, call, very, so. that very was very nice turn. of you. Yeah, very unexpected turn. Once you once I can focus in, I'm like a big teddy bear, and I love people. It's just mm -hmm. getting me to sit and like put yeah, aside yeah. eight thousand freaking things I have to do. I, hey, I we think got that's you. understandable. We got you now. That's all that matters. Um, 
my question for you, Diana, what's the weirdest or I don't want to say worst, but like Giardi was telling us uh, one time that the heating situation at Gillette Stadium was it was subpar for like a really cold weather day. So like what's a weird amenity or story that that we wouldn't know that something that you have to face at a stadium or something like that? Everybody thinks when you're in a dome that life is awesome. Mm hmm. I hate domes because they put the air condition on so low. I don't know if it's to emulate outdoor. I don't know why, but the Saints press box is notorious for being freezing. That, I mean, we everybody tweets about it. We text about it. You have to bring a, a winter coat to Louisiana in September because it's freezing up there. Mm. Um, so I actually have a little secret i don't go to the press box anymore because i can't handle it i just mm. i can't concentrate anymore so there's a section down um like on the floor level where the photographers watch the game and i'll just watch from there because yeah. i can't, can't take it <laughs> yeah nothing nothing says uh new orleans quite like jambalaya mardi gras and um winter jackets. canada yeah canada goose jacket <laughs> yeah so are you a big fan of retractable domes when they open in the middle of a the middle of the day? Does that relieve some of the cold? I tweet at Jim Ursay every time I have a Colts game. I'm mm. like, yo, open or closed. What are we doing? Yeah. Good intel. You know? Good to know. Like it's funny, I was covering the Colts last week and you know, the that organization is incredible. Like mm -hmm. just in terms of helping and they deal with the media really well. And, you know, they'll reach out to you. What can we do? Which players you want to talk to? They're amazing. Yeah. I didn't want to talk to anyone. I didn't care. I said, all I want to know is the roof going to be closed or open. Sure. Because that affects my day. Respectable. If it's yeah. closed, I, you know, I can bring the winter coat. If it's open yeah. and it's only 60, I can bring a light coat. And they were just like, really? That's all you need? Do you want Philip Rivers maybe? I'm like, no, I'm good. No. I'm good. No. <laughs> well, it's river. like, that'd be like taking a vacation without checking the weather. Like you need to know what to pack. I think that's certainly understandable. Thank you. Certainly you understandable. Um, I have a question not to go too off topic. So one of my favorite segments that you've kind of brought, brought to us here as, as viewers is a segment. I first saw it on Dan Lebitard show when you take phone calls and you impersonate your mother, correct? Your mother, or your mother-in-law, my mother. Okay. It's, it's outstanding and it's very entertaining. And I think one of the best parts about it uh -oh. is you use, oh God, no, no, no. I promise I didn't tell her to do this, but you use the old school phone and you tie yourself around the thing as we all used to do. My question is now, since retro things are so cool and coming back to being cool, when do you expect Apple to start selling a old school phone for thousands of dollars? So it's interesting you bring that up because mm -hmm. I refuse to A, give up a landline. I have a landline okay. in my pocket. And Noted. this an actual phone. I that it actually goes in my kitchen, but I use it as a prop over here because people like to talk about the libertarian. It it actually comes in handy. Uh, and is that where you tweet from? <laughs> I do. <laughs> yeah. Got you. you. Uh, I, you call I the tweet, operator I, and let him know what you want. That's where you Twitter. tweet Jim Merce from. <laughs> I I've actually it's so funny that you say that. I have thought about doing this, and I it, nobody really cares enough, but. I uh -huh. thought that real inside people would want, would think it was entertaining. I wanted to like take pictures of where I am mm -hmm. when I break a story or when I tweet something. Yeah. Because if the world knew like the locations, whether I've been in the shower, I've been at my grandmother's, I've, you know, you're in the, I've been on the side of, of, of I-95 in the snow. Like there's just, mm -hmm. because you just never know. And you're always, it is, it works like this all the time. Whenever you you commit to doing something for yourself, for yeah. your loved ones, you know, that's when the biggest story breaks, you know, when I'm like actually at the gym, I'm like, <laughs> I'm going to get fit. Yeah. And then I can't even lift a weight cause I'm on my phone the whole time, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, a lot, a lot of, a lot of tweeting goes down in this bedroom. Well, there's just something hanging up on someone on one of those phones is so much different than hanging up on someone on a smartphone. It's just not the same thing. I was watching a show the other day. Ever notice on TV when somebody uses their smartphone on a show, you can hear them like hang up and dial. It was that Nicole Kidman yeah. show, popular. I'm like, the Undoing. Oh, the Undoing, yeah. Great I'm show. Like, Great show. Horrible ending. Um, Whoa. Okay. It was so. I Let mean, her speak. Every Sorry, week, Diana. it was this cliffhanger. It's like 
I just, I'm so invested and I really wanted it to be, <laughs> you're going to think I'm sick. I wanted it to be Miguel. Her, her... <laughs> I wanted I it to be the dad. I haven't seen it. So thanks. Cool. This is a, this is a spoiler it. alert friendly podcast. So. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Cool. All, All right. Good. We'll talk about that. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, <laughs> yeah. I have noticed that. And actually we were talking to someone the other day, just about how, now that TV shows are coming back, like scripted fictional TV shows, it's so weird how like some are treating it like, yes, we are in the middle of a pandemic. Like we're wearing masks, we're doing this other thing. And then there's like commercials of like guys at a barbecue and <laughs> doing their thing like the old days. And it's like, that's, that's not cool. You don't need to remind me what we're missing out on. Do you ever watch a show and be like, ew, they're so close to each other. All the time. Yeah, me you can too. be like pre-COVID, post-COVID, like easily. But it, it also grosses me out now how yeah. close we were to each other. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. You guys probably don't do this. I'm going to take a look at your faces. I don't think so. But girls get their eyebrows waxed, right? To like keep up with our maintenance. Sure. Of course. So think about that. That's I a pretty, should. You should? <laughs> we'll talk about that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's a pretty intimate experience because the person's really close to your face. Yes. And so I went yesterday and she had, you know, she had the shield and I had the mask. <laughs> and we were talking about like, Ew, like a year ago, you were an inch from my face for like 15 Nothing. minutes. Yeah. Why would we allow that? Yep. At, at this scary. point, I'd be cool with wearing the, the shield that you're talking about. I, I wish that that was like somehow the thing instead of the mask. Oh, the big white uh, Andy Reid shield? Andy Reid shield. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'd be fine with that. I'll fog my, that up all day. My wife works in healthcare and I ask her rather frequently like the difference between just the regular mask and the face shield. Cause I don't quite understand. I feel like the face shield has so much more potential airflow opening, whatever. But from what I've heard, it's, I think safer, right? If not just as safe. I think it is too. My sister-in-law is a dentist and okay. she obviously wears that. We'll have to get her on the show next time, but yeah. Good <laughs> it's gross. <laughs> Good when see what it looks like after like a regular cleaning. Yeah. Like, yeah. Just think when they didn't wear those, that people's like juicy teeth juice was all over their, all over their face. Not great. Mm. Not great. Hey, good, good lunchtime conversation though. Yeah, certainly. <laughs> I Go got ahead. a question for you, Diana. Do you, so actually number one, um, how long have you been on sidelines? So technically I'm a pre-game, post-game reporter. I'm not an in-game sideline reporter. I would like to do that one day. Mm -hmm. uh, I did it for the XFL. That was really wild. Mm. Um, so like my role at ESPN is to cover games for SportsCenter, NFL Countdown, NFL Live before the game and after the game. So um, I've been doing that for, this is my fourth season. I've been at ESPN for six years though. And mm -hmm. I started, my first job at ESPN was to be a SportsCenter anchor. And I did that for two years and I stunk. So they transitioned me into football. And that's why, mm. that's what I do now. I, I feel like you're being hard on yourself, but I guess the, the follow-up to that is where's been the toughest fan base where like, have you ever felt not necessarily heckled, but it was like, man, this is fucking distracting in this specific arena or stadium. So I would say Philly's hard. Philly's been tough. So actually, no. let me do this. Let me apply it. Can we start? Can we apply it to social media first? Yeah. And yes. Apply it. Like, because they're, they're, that's a different beast. Mm -hmm. um, like Philly fans don't bother me on Twitter. They're nice. They're cool. Yeah. Tennessee Titans fans are out of their goddamn mind. Mm. Like something's wrong with them. I don't know. And, and everyone talks about this. Uh, Chris Long and I have had this conversation. Ryan Russell and I have had this conversation. They are so angry. And I don't know why. Especially like I've covered them all year. I covered them last year and I'm, I'm pretty positive about them. I very rarely crush them. The yeah. only time I ever really um, maybe was controversial was last year during training camp. I got some great information from a source there um, that Tannehill was going to wind up winning the quarterback spot, mm -hmm. that they wanted to move in that direction. Ownership wasn't ready to do it. And that it was easily Ryan Tannehill based on practice. Mm -hmm. And I reported that I think on get up or something. And that's when I became just the devil in that. How dare thing. you? Yeah. <laughs> the nerve. I, they love Mariana. Love him. Mm. They still love him. He's not even there. He stinks. Yeah. They don't know. You're, 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 you're in Tennessee a lot this season. I've noticed. Is that, is that part of your, your, your deal or are you guys, 
around certain places? No. All right. Wow. Strong question, Dan. Oh. oh. Fit check. How do you, it's the, not a cowboy hat. It's like a is that the Nashville hat? I like it. I don't know. I just <laughs> it's a you know, you go on the road and when you become when you're going to one place so often, yeah, you feel like you need to start breaking away from just, you know, going going to your hotel. Yeah. And ignoring the life there because you're there. I'm there all the time. So I started yeah. <laughs> to like shop and talk to people. So it's been better. I, I love it there. Yeah. Good. I, I, you could go to, I'm sure there's worse places you could go to every I week. Agree. So yeah, I, I agree. I think Foxborough would be tough. Not much to do there. Fair. Um, quick question. Going back to our mutual friend, Mike Giardi, I'd like to get your opinion on this. We ask a lot of our guests. So in our hometown, long story short, we have a famous, not famous, but we have a, a, a bar deli kind of place and they have sandwiches named after various New England athletes. So we asked Mike, hey, Mike, if there was a Mike Giardi sandwich, what would it be? Do you remember this, Opie? And he I had a very, a very suspect answer. He yeah. said, he said, mine would be a banana with protein butter, like spread on it. And that would be it. Yeah, and I want to say he said like Nutella or some shit like that. Something something strange. And I went with it because we're new in the industry. We don't want to ruffle any feathers. That is a rather suspect answer, no? It's weird. It's but weird. Mike's weird. Mike's weird. So <laughs> Fair. Yep. Mike's it's weird. not even close. It's not a sandwich. I mean, this is absurd. Okay, so when you talk about going to these different cities and covering these different teams, you have to uh -huh. um, deal with the local media of that city, right? Yeah, so yeah. I can like local there even though he's national but he's local for for boston right they are my favorite new like press corps like mm. those guys are so dry everyone is such an asshole in such mm -hmm. a great way thank and you that, we're part it, of that new england media so thank no, you but you guys both are <laughs> um and, and mike was my first run-in with this guy is so grumpy and he's such mm. a jerk mm -hmm. and it's made me just probably love him more than I ever have because I, I realized he's just not fake. He just didn't have time to kiss my butt and be like all cute and nice. Yeah. He was like, what? Who are you? Yeah. Get away. Yeah. Um, but I, I love all those guys. They do such a good job. Yeah. Good, Sophie, before we... But that's a weird sandwich. Here. Thank you. That's just That's all I was trying to confirm for Mike. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'll let him know. Um, we told him that, that we'd report back with your thoughts on it. Last question from me, Diana, and we'll let you go. Um, I've seen you go back and forth a little bit with PFT commenter on Twitter. So I know that you can uh, roll with the jokes. This isn't that crazy. Um, legitimately, three of my favorite plays, I'd like you to rank them. These are my favorite plays in football. Oh, God. A <laughs> coffin corner kick, but specifically when like the gunner or something d has to dive into the end zone to tip it back to the one. So there's that. <laughs> There's a game-winning, like, long field goal, or now the new onside kick. Rank those. Uh, I would actually rank them in the order you gave them. Why? I, you like the new onside kick? He's so weird. When, when, when it works and when they try it, it's like, ooh, I've never seen the ball spin like that before. On so TV. That 3% of the time is super exciting. Yes. No so <laughs> when I cover the XFL, they were oh, experimenting <laughs> with all this weird stuff. Yeah. <laughs> it sounded goofy, but when you got to see it, it was so freaking fun. Yeah. And, and a lot of things that they should have, they should apply. They should right. do it in the NFL. Well, the OG XFL, they had like the, their kickoff was to just roll down the ball and two guys <laughs> spray and go to get it. <laughs> that, that's bar. That's, that's like gladiator. Like that's like absolutely barbaric. I love it. Safety was like a priority but. then. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so that's actually a fair answer. I know Soapy's not very, he doesn't choose the most exciting plays, but people like what they like. And uh, with that being said, we'll, we'll let you go, Diana. Before we do though, wh where's the best place for everyone to, to follow you on social media and, and keep up with everything you have going on? Yeah, are you on any big like famous channels, anything like that? Mm, you can catch me on ESPN every Sunday morning yes, um, write that on down. Sunday okay. NFL countdown yes. and also on the fantasy football show. I probably say, I Oh yeah, best. that's a I good one. Are, are you on the, the new uh, Wednesday afternoon pregame show as well for this season? I am not. Or is it um, like one thirty PM Eastern? <laughs> for I, the three I wonder if they even did that. I don't even I, know what you did for that. But I remember yeah. I was sitting around. I was just like, there's it's Wednesday afternoon. There's really a nationally televised NFL game right now. Like, what are we doing? Like what's happening? I and half the team is 
not I allowed just, to play. It's so weird. Yeah. Um, but it's great. I think we all obviously love football. So right. I'll, but I'll, anyway, I'll... so so where's the best way to place to find you on Twitter and Instagram? Okay, at Diana ESPN. It's Diana with two N's for double mm. the fun. Mm, nice. Okay. Two S's too. Oh yeah, but there's no worse name. But it's just Diana ESPN. Gotcha. Which what's gonna happen if I get fired? I assume it just be at Diana. Do you think I can drop ESPN? I'll check with legal, but it's well, we'll get back to you. We'll look into it. All right. Now that we're if you ever place. see it like cross the wire or like Twitter, or, like I got like an <laughs> offer or something, just like just reach yeah. out, be like, yo, I have yeah. an idea for your new name. Like just don't even like yeah, yeah. acknowledge that I got fired. Just be like, yo, here's your new name starting now. Well, Keep I assume if you ever, if you ever left, the next handle would naturally be at Diana the Morse Code Podcast. That's right. I was just saying, hey, can I join you guys if I lose my job? We'll see. You missed yeah. open enrollment season for benefits, but we'll see what we can do. Uh, It'll still year. be but, a, a pregame postgame thing. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> Diana, thank you for coming on. Damn sidelines. Appreciate your time, and um, for everyone else, we'll see you guys next time. Peace.